Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today, we're going to do a little overhead welding with 7018, some 332nd Lincoln Excalibur rods, as well as some 1 8 cheap Techno Weld, some, I don't know, off brand uh, 7018, 1 8, but um, just, to, just to use both different sizes and talk about different amperages and whatnot, we use both. There's, there's basically three things that make uh, most of the difference when you're, when you're stick welding overhead with 7018. I usually tell people the best advice I give if, I, if I'm just in a pinch and just need to give quick advice, two things make more difference than anything else, uh, amperage and arc length. So what I tell people is set the machine hot enough, use enough amps so that you can hold a tight arc and the rod doesn't stick, and then hold a tight arc. But there's a third thing, and that's rod angle. So you got you need to get you need to have the machine set hot enough you need to use a tight arc and you need to use the right rod angle and the right rod angle to, for me what works for me is having it as straight in as possible so if I'm welding in this direction I want it pretty much straight in maybe kick back five degrees or even five degrees this way sometimes works but if you're going this way and you use an extreme angle like that that arc force will drive that that molten metal and make it crown up sometimes even make it fall out so you don't want to use much of an angle and that, that holds true for coming off the bottom of a pipe also coming off the bottom of a pipe you know if, if you've got a round pipe surface you don't want to come off the bottom like this that makes that, that again it crowns up that's why you get the big lumps on the bottom if you can come in straight up and down with enough heat and a good tight arc usually you can make it look as flat as you can laying down on the table so three things again uh, amperage arc length rod angle so it's about hundred in the shop today it's always you always need to wait till it's at least hundred degrees before you put on leathers and uh, and stick well don't you think so but we're gonna do it anyway because hey it's you and <laughs> I've been doing a little TIG welding with this Everlast 160 STH I'm trying to film a 6G 2 inch Schedule 80 so I gotta swap it over from TIG to stick so I'm popping the TIG torch loose in the remote along with the argon fitting then I'm going to swap the ground clamp over and plug the stick lead in so I've got electrode positive. I'm ready to stick weld after I press the TIG stick button. Now I'm ready to stick. I'm going to start off about 95 amps with the 332nd Excalibur rod. I'm using pretty much a dead straight angle and it's okay it's not sticking but it's not quite hot enough so I bumped it up about 5 amps to 100 amps. Excalibur rods have a little bit higher a little bit heavier flux coating they're a little bit bigger in diameter than other some other 7018 rods so they can handle a few more amps has been my experience anyway. I want to show you a little prop technique I have. It's a pinky to thumb collapse thing. And I sped it up here where you can see my hands collapsing and moving in. It gives me a steady place to prop pretty much anywhere without having to crook my elbow where I trap fire in my elbow. Been there, done that. This just this makes me more comfortable and it's an easier way for me to prop. Alright, that's a total of three beads in there. The root pass and then two stacked. I missed them with the camera but I'll run three more and catch them with the camera here. So what I'm doing here is keeping a tight arc, not a lot of rod angle, probably a little bit more than I intend to, and I'm trying to line up, center up with the very bottom toe of the weld there, what I previously laid down. Now if you do it right, you got the heat set right and everything with these Excalibur rods, you get awarded with a, a big piece of slag that peels off like that. That makes you feel like you're uh, better than you really are probably. <laughs> Uh, the second pass, I want to overlap what I just put down by about half, so I'm centering up kind of on the top toe of that of that bead, and I'm also keeping an eye on the top of the weld there and trying to go even, so I don't get squiggly. That one went in there pretty good, pretty happy with that. And I've got it laid down here flat while I'm grinding, while I'm uh, brushing it and chipping it and whatnot. Don't think I laid this thing down flat to weld it because I didn't. And we'll put it back up and go the other direction for that final pass. Now a final pass on any multi-pass fillet weld tends to go slower. You tend to have to hang around a little bit because you're filling in a little nook there. 
and always watch the top really carefully try not to not to bobble and, and, and leave undercut and try to go just slow enough to not leave undercut but generally that last bead goes in a little slower than the rest and that's okay sometimes you have to make up the difference if you don't stack them just right you gotta go a little bit slower just to kinda make it even and that's what we'll show you in a minute when we swap over to the 1 8 rod so that's that's a, a layer of three passes total of six beads now with a 3 30 second what we're going to do now is going to crank it up to about 140. You know, some uh, some 7018 1/8s will run fine about 120, 125, but I found I had to go up to about 140 on these uh, to make them run pretty good. So that first pass again, the 1/8 rod, tight arc, not a whole lot of rod angle, and lining up dead center on the bottom toe of the weld. And then the second pass, I'm lining up, kind of trying to overlap half of what I just put down, that last bead I just put down, and kind of watching the top, trying to stay even with the top toe of that last of the top weld. And didn't quite get there, so now I'm having to do a little bit of oscillation and go a little bit slower just to make up the difference, because could have put an extra bead after the end, but it really didn't warrant that. Just going a little slower here, with a little oscillation, good tight arc, watching the top of that bead to prevent undercut, it worked out pretty well. Slag doesn't peel off like an onion quite like the Excalibur, but it comes off okay. These are Technoweld uh, brand brand name rods, and they're not fresh. They, they've been sitting out a while. They should be in an oven, but they're okay for doing this little demo. But you see, using enough amperage and a tight arc and the other tips, even welding overhead, it doesn't mound and hang and everything. It lays in there nice and flat because your arc force pushes it in. It's hard to believe we live in, in a time where a, a little welder, not much bigger than a lunchbox like this, will burn a 1-8-70-18 a and will TIG weld and, uh, and all that stuff. Pretty amazing. I've been using this welder also to film this doing some work filming this 6G 2-inch Schedule 80 pipe with a dip technique on the root and then a stick, stick cap pass. Working on that, that'll be out in a few weeks anyway. And uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Visit WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.